lock is flooded. But it's okay. It's only a little bit flooded. We're only about three inches over the jetty. So, what we're going to do, we're going to fish. And I'm hoping because the lock is flooded, this persuades people to stay away. So maybe I can fish in peace. I'm on the upper lock today. Because I can't really face going to the lower. I'll be honest with you, that guy pulling nets out and subsequent stories I've heard about that guy. Well, it really made me ask if I wanted to continue fishing the urn. Honestly, it really did. But, we're here and we're fishing, or we will be soon. So let's roll that uh, sexy new intro and uh, see what today brings, eh? Morning! It's a rainy Sunday morning, windy Sunday morning, and the upper lock is flooded. So yeah, almost perfect normal conditions then, eh? I have two rods in at the minute, and I have two rods here beside me to make up. The, the bivvy had to take priority after I got the first tour of the brawl even. Because the rain just whipped down, you know, it was like, if this is what it's going to be like all day, I am definitely going to be thankful that I waterproofed the brolly. However, I'm going to get a cup of coffee on the go, and then go out and put the other two rods out. Let's hope I friggin' catch something today. It's the end of January. I've not caught a pike in 2021 yet. That sucks. The rain is actually getting kind of worse. <laughs> I think the lock is actually uh, on rising. Because where I screwed in the, the uh, stage stands for the rods, it was uh, there was a full like uh, board in the jetty that was dry. There was no uh, water on it, and now that's sitting underwater. So, oh well, it's rising. Just to show you where we are. Not a bad view. One eternity later. I wonder will anything pull the drop arms. I've had a few knocks on the, uh, not the rod that's closest to me, the rod that's just next to it. That's, that's the wind I'm suspecting. The drop arms on the other rod, it just kind of dropped a little bit. So I'm thinking something's obviously moved the lead a little bit. Let's have a look and see what's coming. Fingers crossed it could be another fish. Well, first pike of 2021. And it's a little jack that took a whole mackerel. And believe it or not, it's not even hooked. Not even hooked, through the hooks in the net. Let's get it out of the net till we have a, a little look at it. And this is why I like the cradles, because they can flip about and they can't do themselves any harm. Perfectly soft, easy to work with. And now I'm going to take a photograph of this little jack because it's the first one of this year.
first fish of 2021. Healthy, nice condition. And there he goes. That one took a mackerel, so I'm going to put a mackerel. You can actually see the oil slick. We're a bit down in the mackerel, so I'm going to throw another mackerel out and see if we can get some more pike. But that water is absolutely freezing. We've had a fish. <laughs> Only a small jack, but it's the first pike of 2021. I do like this venue, it tends to be a bit of a confidence booster when you're able to come to a venue and uh, kind of know you're going to catch you know, at least jacks, so I had to come here. I fished most of January, I've had a couple of pike take like having runs and stuff, but I've had no pike in my unhooking mat, or my cradle even, so today has changed all that. I'll be honest, I will, like honestly you guys, I mean I don't have to lie to you people. The, this week was hard for me. I was going to go out a couple of times this week and the alarm went off at 5 in the morning, you know, and I just kind of waited up as I stayed in bed and thought, nah, I'm not going to go fishing today. You know, I'm not just going to stay in bed and chill out. It was one of those trying to find the motivation to get out and do things moments. And today's cooking with scopes is something dead easy. It's one of those ready meal burger things that I've got in the little ridge monkey. I'm just warming it through. I did buy some really nice, or oh, they looked really nice in the packets, chicken and chorizo, like samosa things from, from Tesco's. And I ate two of them, and I found out that they were basically loads of pastry and loads of sauce and very little to no meat. So, they're alright I guess. What can you expect for like, there was like three in a packet and they were like a pound or something. You know, so what can you really expect for a pound? I'm not gonna expect too much for a pound but it was good to kind of try something different try something new that was a shopping day with the missus i have discovered that pregnant mrs scoby is it's very cranky now mrs scoby used to be very cranky if you took away her sleep that's just got a little bit worse if you take away Mrs. Scobie's sleep, then she gets doubly cranky. So, I'm, I'm enjoying getting out of the house, letting the wife sleep on in bed. She's still working, which is, at least one of us in the house are still working, I'm still furloughed. So Mrs. Scobie's a nurse, she works in the hospital, so it's 12 hour shifts. He isn't really ideal. But what can you do, you know? You just have to do it. You know, with my work only paying me 80%, that's really made things tight. So she's working her normal shifts, you know, and maybe the odd bank shift just to kind of make ends meet for us. But that's kind of reckon that's really kind of annoying me because I'm sitting there going, you know. I should be the provider, I should be the man in the family. So, can't even go and get any bar shifts. I'm, that's my squeaky boot. I'm trying not to go back in, into the security world. You know, because I really don't want to do security work ever again. But that isn't even an option, because there's no pubs or clubs or anything open, so... The chances of getting a getting you know a 
a shift working in the bar a couple of nights a week to make ends meet or to make a bit of extra cash is uh, not happening. So, it's just one of them things, you know. I mean, it's tight for everybody. Everybody that I speak to that's in the same position as ourselves, they're all saying the same things. I mean, you know, one of my friends, his wife makes uh, cakes for weddings. She's been, you know, really struggling because you can't, there's no weddings. You know, or you're not gonna, if you have a wedding, you're only allowed like 10 people there. So you're not exactly gonna make a, ma like a monster big cake for 10 people. You know, but they're up in Belfast, so they're really, really struggling. And that's Belfast, that's like one of the bigger cities in Northern Ireland. I can't imagine what small business, small businesses are doing at the minute. Just have to get on with it, I guess. Nothing's gonna change. really isn't much that we can do is there with lockdowns and lockdowns and all that crap and then we've had a bit of bother with the old vaccines now I've kind of looked but you know I've kind of been sitting thinking with myself about the vaccine by the time the vaccine would come round to people like me to get it, we're talking like the summer of 2023. So I think if I've uh, survived till 2023 without catching the chain of cough, or sorry, unnamed illness from unspecified origin, YouTube algorithm kissed my ass. Then I think I might just swerve the swerve the uh, the jab altogether. But it made me chuckle that the EU spent the whole of the Brexit the Brexit negotiations and thing kind of threatening that Brexit will bring about uh, war in the streets in Northern Ireland. It'll destroy the Good Friday Agreement and it'll bring the fucking violence back. And that made me laugh because I was there going, you know. Who's going to be violent? You, you, I just don't get it. I mean, surely if the EU wanted to put a hard border in, in like Ireland, then it would be the EU border force that would be uh, staffing it. It certainly wouldn't be the British British Armed Forces. You know, those days the troubles aren't aren't like they'd ever come back. You know, but it's, it seemed to be that the way the whole Irish Sea border thing wasn't really well thought out, I don't think. My parents were saying that the next time they go to Scotland, they have to get a pet passport, which is more money. Then your dog has to get a rabies injection, even though that there's no rabies in the UK or the Republic of Ireland. And that your dog has to be wormed by a vet three weeks before you go and like go across to the mainland. So there's nonsense. There is nonsense like that happening. I've noticed on eBay that a lot of the shops I would normally buy, like little bits and pieces from, they just stopped delivering to the Northern Ireland. And from speaking to some, some of them, they were saying, look, they just don't have the time to process the extra page that they need to dec that they need to declare. Apparently, if it's over a certain amount of money, if it's over like 150 quid, it has to be declared and all that sort of stuff. So it's not been, it's been a strange one. I do think that eventually all this will work itself out, you know. I think Boris will kind of, at the end of the, Boris might be a really headed idiot, but he's a unionist, he's very pro-UK. So I can't see him, you know, letting the part of the UK kind of get the sharp end of the stick. It did make me chuckle, the whole Brexit thing. That you know, hard borders in Ireland would make would make the troubles come back. It's like okay, fair enough. And the British government said at the start they were never going to put a, a border here. The, the, the like Northern Ireland's weird. It has like unionists and republicans and nationalists. Like it's a weird place. You have basically two tribes. You've kind of unionists, and then they had militant wing, which would be like loyalists, like terrorists. 
then you had nationalists on the other side and their terrorist wing would be republicans so the way i look at things if somebody says to me i am a loyalist then they're a supporter of violence sports terrorism i don't think that don't support that just the same as if somebody says to me that they are a republican you know i would say to them you know i don't support violence you know i think that if you're supporting murderers then you're a scumbag that's just my views i'll tell you another story but after i finish this one anyway with the vaccines because the uk is kind of ahead of making vaccines for this unnamed virus the EU tried to uh, storm the facility in Belgium or wherever it is in mainland UK and then they tried to they, they invoked an article to basically put a hard border in Northern Ireland between Northern Ireland and the South so the whole years and years and years we had you know everybody that talks of their arse telling us that this was going to bring violence to Northern Ireland and the EU was trying to protect Northern Ireland now they were well they basically turned on a dime and put a border up when nobody else wanted it <laughs> so it was like they basically did what they were accusing everyone else of wanting to do weird bunch I'm glad we left the EU I really am and to my, to my French and German guys that watch the videos you know that I love you you know that I love talking to you and chatting to you and from listening to the different guys that I know I mean I've got guys that are from Holland and Holland's tearing itself to bits at the minute with riots because uh, they're kicking off because they don't want any more lockdowns France has been kicking off for years I mean they still have yellow jacket riots every other weekend in Paris but you don't see any of that on TV and in Germany there's a, like a rise of a it's kind of strange because in Germany it's as much the same as in the UK if you come out and say things like I think the UK should limit immigration I think the UK should have a points based immigration system like Australia if you come out and say that in Germany you're classed as a as, a, as like some sort of racist and I don't understand why it's classed as racist you know if I wanted to go to Australia I would have to have a place to live money in the bank to support me and a job and I don't think that's unfair so I don't think that's not a bad thing to have here in the UK if you're going to come here if you want to come here and work obey the law pay taxes integrate into society welcome aboard we will welcome you aboard you'll love it here the UK is a fucking great place to live but if you're here for a benefit check and you don't have any skills and you ain't got a place to live and you don't have a job then sorry but we don't need you we certainly don't need you the UK is that much of a is that beautiful a country is that well respected as a country that people are taking their lives in their hands to try and sneak in on little rubber boats across the English Channel you know and straight away that shoots down the argument that the UK is some sort of racist hellscape if it was like that do you think they'd be coming? no UK is one of the most polite, welcoming societies I've ever been in in my life. I've been fortunate enough to go around the world. And, yeah. You don't get a welcome like you do in the UK. But, such and such is the way of the world, I guess. You'll notice that I'm fishing actually on the uh, jetty. I got these uh, screw things. Where did I put them? I wonder if I still have them in my pocket. Little uh, screws that screw into the jetty. Ah, here they are. I got these things. And they're made by Fox, I don't know if you can see that. But you basically screw them into the wooden jetty. So your like the, the brolly here at the minute's been screwed in by about ten of these. So it's not going anywhere. 
But they weren't expensive, they were like £8 for a pack of 15 or £8 for 20 They didn't actually come in a fox bag, they came in a little a little kind of canvasy bag like this with no stickers or fox logos on them So I don't know if they were actually fox tent screws or whatever you call them or it was some other company just knocking them out cheap but they do the job they aren't expensive, they do the job oh. and that means that the, the, the brolly is kept here on the, on the jetty same with the uh, the bank sticks and the stage stands I've just screwed them in between the, the bits of wood the jetty get a nice solid rod rest I didn't think about bringing the bait boat today but it's not actually that windy I could have got away with using the bait boat I can see across the far bank there's two bivvies on that side of the lock so there's quite a few people here there's been quite a few cars has driven to the car park here and stopped and you know, chatted to me for a bit and I was like okay but I've never not actually like went away to fish there's guys above me uh, but I don't really mind you know they're fishing on flooded wooden jetties so they're using the jetty to cast from and then coming back and sitting in the grass But I think I have the only one, I'm the only one that's actually caught the thing today, so... But hey! <laughs> anyway, let's have this uh, burger thing and cup of coffee. I'll get back to you. That was interesting. I was winding in one of the, uh, the rods that's closer to me. It has a nice big roach on it. And I got to about, I would say a good about 10 yards, 10 meters from the bank And there was a big swirl and the rod went down I thought, alright, oh, just took it, on the, took it on the retrieve And as the rod went down it came back like that Ping And I had no lead But I had a trace, and the trace that the bait didn't have any teeth marks So, I think the pike went for the, the bait, missed the bait, hit the lead And is now swimming around Wondering what happened? Where's its fish? <laughs> oh. So, one pike, one nearly another one. It's not been a bad day. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay, it could be better. It could be like a you know, a 25 pound monster but I'll settle for catching jacks at the minute just to get the get the old confidence back up <laughs> okay okay, we're in Hey! Doesn't feel very big. This is on the smelt. That's a little trout. No, it's a little pike. Okay, you have thrown off the hook and you have snapped my lead, little fish. But I don't mind because I'm going to bring you over here to my... no, the lead's still there <laughs> this is the uh, the smallest little pike I've seen in a long time okay, calm down, chill 
Oh God, come on. Come on, this is why jacks are a pain in the friggin' ass to try and unhook. Come on, you little bugger. <laughs> there we go. Possibly the smallest pike I've caught this year. <laughs> well, that is the smallest pike I've caught this year. <laughs> Let's put it back. And there, there it goes, like a bolt. <laughs> oh, two pike. Woohoo! That's two fish today. One teeny tiny jack on a smelt and one slightly bigger jack on a whole mackerel. It's gone 20 past four. It's still absolutely belting it down with rain. And if I didn't have the old brolly up in the go, then <laughs> it would be like a drowned rat. Fished a combination of baits popped up and ledgered hard on the bottom. Both pike took the baits that were hard on the bottom. So I would say that little teeny tiny jack in a couple of months time when the water heats up. I read an article during the week of how roach spread through uh, Ireland. You know, this is before the days where Northern Ireland existed, but how roach spread through the whole system. And it, it gives it's now whether or not it's factual, you know, it gives it the old story that there was some English guy who came across to fish for pike and he had a tin of roach. Now I have seen the old live bait tins that they used to use back in the day. They were small galvanized buckets and they had holes in the lid of them. So technically you could bring one of, I suppose you could bring one of these fish or a couple of them across from England. And, you know. But he said he had a couple of dace and a couple of roach in this tin back in the day. So it's strange that we have loads of roach and no days but i i don't think that's you know how roach kind of got here but it was an interesting article it kind of backed up the reasoning that you know everything predator prey relationships and everything got you know with a lot of with with, with more fodder fish then the pike should get bigger. But not only the pike, all the predatory species like perch, trout, should all get bigger because of the roach. In fact, it was such a a good idea that these these little silver roach, the little silver fish, that the Duke of Abercorn back in the day asked for roach to be brung from where they were on in the south of Ireland up to Barnes Court Estate, not far from where I live, and introduced in there to feed the pike. Now, I fish Barnes Court Estate quite a lot. It's one of my favourite places. And roach aren't that prevalent, aren't that uh, prominent there, believe it or not. You will get loads of silver bream, but not that many roach. So it's odd that this 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 estate was named that the fish were transported up to you know the different places on the estate and put into the locks and then the locks obviously flooded into the local rivers uh, it claimed that it flooded into the rivers the Derg rivers the river Derg the ferry water the the Camoan the Strule well it would have flooded from Newton Stewart into the uh, the strill in the morn. If you go up, you go up towards Oma, your rivers break off where you find the ferry water, 
where you find the rivers Drumran, Camon. Now I've caught roach in the Drumra and I've caught roach in the Camon. But the local Oma Council, this is recently, was like the last ten years, they built a stupid weir at the bottom of the bus depot in the, in the main in Oma town. So that kind of stopped the shoals travelling up down the river. Which was stupid. But it was interesting to read how, how Roach apparently got through to got to Ireland. Just one of those, I mean, I, I, I take it with a pinch of salt. I didn't really you know, believe that it was like exactly that. For a start, fish can, their DNA and their genes can be tested. And they can be found as to where they're from and everything. So if that was true, then all the roach in Ireland would have come from roach in England. Therefore, the, gen the DNA and the genes would be identical to the roach in England. But they're not. There's different strands of roach and there's different strands of rud throughout the whole of the island. So it's weird. Roach are one of those fantastic little fish that have a high uh, successful breeding rate. Which is why they're basically the food for everything. Everything eats them. And if there's if there's nothing to take them away, they'll just keep growing and growing and growing and growing. Which is what's happening, by the way, in uh, locks Corrib and Mask and Calm. All the big locks where idiots have been killing the pike out. They have an explosion of coarse fish. And as a pike angler, you kind of have, have a bit of a chuckle and think, you know, well, if only there was some species of fish that ate all these coarse fish, you know. But, what can you do? The Ulster Angling Federation posted it on their social media. Now, the Ulster Angling Federation is a strange group. They post themselves as wanting to represent all angling. But they still come out with stupid things like calling pike invasive. You know, the, the debate, the science has settled. Pike have been here, you know, since the last ice age. Pike are not invasive. You know, pike are spread across the entire northern hemisphere of the planet. So, when you see people saying, oh, they're invasive, it's either willful ignorance or it's because they have a, they don't like the fish, they don't like pike. But the Ulster Angling Federation, from anyone looking in, would look at it and say, yeah, they're definitely a group that's leaning towards being predominantly all about game fishing. There's a big one at the minute where there's a place in Northern Ireland called the Spelga Dam. Now Spelga Dam was up in the hills. Uh, they basically dammed a small stream to provide water for Belfast. And then they claimed that over the years pike anglers have stocked it with pike and these pike have to be removed because it's destroying a, a, a trout fishery. I'd love to meet one of these pike stocking ninjas that kind of creeps about in the night with a big bucket full of pike and stocking them into places. Because the same absolute tripe is talked about down south in a place called the Owen Riff, the river. Now the ironic thing is, in the Owen Riff, there's anglers in the south of Ireland, there's very, very well-known anglers that have come to fish all over the place. They've caught pike in the own Riff, going back as far as the 80s. Bert Rosemeyer, the, the famous lure guy, he caught pike in it in the 80s. In the early 90s, guys like Al Rollins caught pike in the own Riff. 
you know, so for trout guys to suddenly turn up and say, these fish never were here, that's nonsense. You know, absolute nonsense. Again, there's a lock not far from where I am right now, and years ago, the ministry allegedly uh, gassed the lock, killed everything in it, took away all life in it. Just so they could stock it with trout. Yeah, they're they're a fisheries management lot, aren't they? But now there's pike in it. There's roach in it. There's perch in it. There's some trout in it. And they're all going. They're all crying about who's put these pike in it. And they're blaming pike anglers for moving fish. Pike anglers didn't move fish. You know, the roach, the perch, the pike would have got in the exact same way. If there's studies shown that wading birds can carry sticky bird eggs from one body of water to the other, then that's how the pike got in, that's how the roach got in, that's how the perch got in. Nobody, <laughs> you know. There isn't some great conspiracy out there for, you know, to bring, you know, fish to different places. But, what can you do? You just have to deal with these people. They're hard work, they really are. Anyway, if you're watching and you've got to this length in the video and you haven't yet subscribed, then maybe give it a thought because it would help me out. It doesn't cost anything. You don't get uh, flooded with notifications to an email box. The only reason you'd get notified that I made a video is if you click the bell icon. So if you're wanting to be notified that I do post a video, then do click the bell icon. And please feel free to leave a like and a share and comments and all that sort of stuff. The last video I posted, with one, the one with the netting, it's just went past 6,000 views. I want to thank everyone that liked and shared that one. From conversations with people who know these guys, there's two main netmen and that fish that part of the lock. The thing I said before last week's video or last week's video was just because it's legal doesn't make it right. It was legal to uh, hunt whales and drive them to nearly extinction. Didn't make it right. These guys have there's been offers made in the past for these guys licenses to be bought quite a substantial offer from what I can gather and they turned it down so the only way things will change well there's two ways things will change uh, those guys will pass away and not that I, I'm not wishing anyone's death you know they would pass away and that will stop because I don't think either of them have any sort of um, next of kin to take it on. Or that the government body that issues licenses turns around and says no more licenses, no more commercial fishing. Now that means that we have to get the government body to do something. Government body in charge of commercial fishing for Northern Ireland is useless and that's putting it generously you know it is definitely useless but it does make me ask the question I mean I'm looking forward to being a dad come July I'm looking forward to meeting the little bugger it makes me wonder how much of a fishery I'll have left to hand over to my children I did see footage 
and I'm not sure if I should break this and make this public, but this footage showed the the foot the boat bottom of the boat for one of these gentlemen, and there was five fish in the bottom of the boat. He bragged that the smallest one was 46 inches long. And the one in the middle that I seen lying in the bottom of the boat was easily a fish that was about 35 pounds. And that's been conservative in an estimation. It was easily that size. These were netted in uh, 2019. And these were netted from the, the lower lock. Those fish, let's be honest, if a fish is that long, then that fish is a big mid-20. That is, that is your brood stock, that is the fish that are providing, you know, they are the tippy top of the food pyramid. So it's very heartbreaking to see five of them strangled to death in gill nets and then th threw into the bottom of a boat. And what drove the uh, the pain even more, when this footage was being taken, the fisherman, the commercial fisherman, the net guy, all you could hear about was him laughing in the background. That's all you could hear was his laughter. That's why this week's been hard. Because I put that video out and it seemed like a load of people got in touch with me and it's like, Jesus! <laughs> the amount of people on Facebook that I've never met before in my life, that I've never even heard of, that came out of nowhere, came out of nowhere with who these people are, where they're, where the fish go. You know, so the, the information that I kind of got given. Look, I, I'm not going to be disrespectful to anyone that's talking to me. But if people are telling me stuff, I kind of just can't take everything, you know, with a pinch. I have to take everything with a pinch of salt. Because people could be trolls. But when people are coming out, well, here's, here's, here's a video. Showing you this, you can't really fake that. So it's been a tough week to get the motivation to come out and fish. Anyway, I want to say thank you to everyone's liking, sharing, subscribing, and all the good stuff that you have to do for Facebook. I'm now going to pack up and drive. Well, I'm going to fish to. What time is it now? It's 20 to 5. I probably fished about half five. Then I'd pack up, disappear off home, warm myself beside the log fire, and get something to eat. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching.